Good morning from the sanctuary of the First Assembly of God in Fitzgerald, Georgia. We want to welcome you here this morning and let you know that we are glad you are here. We had such a phenomenal response to last week's uh, lesson that I thought that I would bring you another one today, and it is entitled, Your Connection to God. So before we begin, I want to read this scripture, and then we're going to read it again a little later on. So if you want to look with me, it's in Luke, the 22nd chapter, starting at verse 39. And it says, speaking of Jesus, And he came out and went, as he was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And when he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, he kneeled down and prayed. And we're going to stop right there. You know, I read the other day that we were made in such a way that we have a need to worship something. As such, if we don't intentionally make time to worship God, we will worship something else. Think about it. We have so many pursuits in this life. And if we're not careful, they can consume all of our time so that there's no time left for God. And, and me personally, I worry that some Christians' only interaction with God and His Word is at the church. If we're not careful, we can develop a dependency on the church service to be our connection to the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in church. I have a, uh, a captain's wheel on, hanging on the wall of my house that my brother Brian gave to me several years ago. And on it, it says, The Obedient Christian in Action. And it has listed the four spokes, prayer, witnessing, the word, and fellowship. It would be like sitting on a four-post stool, and if the parts are not equal, it will be uh, unlevel and will wobble. So just so in your Christian experience, you need to be leveled out and have all these things operating. So I believe in church. But right now in this time that we are experiencing this, this craziness of uh, COVID-19 and coronavirus, we should take advantage of what God is trying to show us. For every time that you are in a uh, situation or a tribulation or trial, there are things that can be learned. It behooves us then to learn what God wants us to know. And so that's why I worry that, that, that we can depend, uh, have such a dependency on our church services that we fail to make a personal connection with God ourselves. So I wanted you to think back about in the time of the Israelites. They depended on the priests to interact with God for them. The priests would go into the Holy of Holies and uh, offer sacrifices for, for the people and himself. And then the prophet would also be their connection, would speak to God for the king. Later on in the early church period, the leadership, they found it beneficial to withhold the Bible from the common man. Listen, as others tried to make the word readily available, church councils would block these attempts. Even in 1229 in France, there was a church council, a rule was made that forbade anyone from owning a copy of the Bible. This was to keep people from knowing what God was saying to them. And so they had to depend on a speaker to tell them what God wanted them to know. And we know uh, from watching, reading, and studying church history that sometimes these leaders were, did not have their congregation's best interests at heart. Now we live in this present age, and, and many depend on the pastor's words and prayers to fill that time of fellowship for them. But listen, when you depend on others, you can fall into a form of religion and a dependency upon the leadership. And we can begin to believe we've met our obligation to God by our weekly church attendance. And I'm worried about us. Don't know how to worship apart from a church setting. And many go to church and never experience worship. They, we come and we sit down and we, we uh, go through the motions and we're not careful. It turns into uh, a spectator sport where we depend on the worship team to do all the singing for us and we follow along with the words up on the... Uh, the wall behind us, and then the pastor gets up, and he, he prays for us, and he, and he reads the Bible to us, and many of us don't even carry our word. We don't know where the scriptures, references are found, so we're depending on the word uh, projected on the wall. And we find ourselves with a growing dependency. And I want you to break out of that. I want you to depend on God. So let's look to Jesus for direction. 
You know, I want to encourage you to take this time away from church setting to exercise your ability to worship and communicate with God without any kind of external stimuli. I, for one, think that canceling services could be a good thing as it can help us open our eyes to our dependency upon others to provide for our worship. And as I said before, I believe in church. I spent my whole life in church, but it wasn't till several years ago that I realized that church cannot take the place of my personal relationship with God. I must feed that spiritual man. So let's look back at Luke twenty-two thirty-nine. It says that Jesus came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives as the disciples followed him. So that word came out in verse 39 is a phrase that means he separated himself. And what he did, he separated himself from people, from responsibilities, and whatever competed for his time. You know what? I think many people are uncomfortable with quiet. They don't like to be alone. And uh, if you get alone with them in a room, many people cannot uh, just be quiet. They are they get nervous with silence. And so I hear so much unnecessary talk in the course of a day and find many who are just uncomfortable being by themselves. They don't know how to be alone with themselves. And so they have to have some external stimuli, some noise going, either a conversation or on the phone or, or listening to music or watching television or something, even going through their day, they want some kind of background noise. You know, I'm losing my hearing in my left ear. It's called sudden hearing loss. And I have found that these noises really have begun to irritate me. I find I do better in a quiet atmosphere without a lot of external noise. And maybe I'm learning something. What I'm suggesting is not that you live in solitude. God doesn't want you to be a hermit. But learn to be alone with God and learn the art of listening. Learn to be comfortable in His presence. Never taking Him for granted. And always showing reverential fear for who He is. So the first thing is as He came out or He separated Himself. The second thing I want to point out, it said, the verse says, as he was wont. The word want means was his custom or his habit, something that he was used to doing, that he did on a regular basis. Jesus had a custom of going to a particular place to pray, and it was not the temple. It said that he liked to go to the Mount of Olives. Ain't that great that Jesus had a place that he liked to go and spend time alone with his father? You know, at the house, I have, I wanted to take a picture of it, but when I took a picture, I said, ain't no way I'm showing this on television or on, on YouTube where I go and get along with God. But I have a special place at home. It's a, a red recliner that I sit in, and, and I have uh, beside me a, 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 a bookcase, and it has Bibles and study books in it and, and different, uh, different books that I read and I study. <laughs> And that's where I like to get. And I have a special time that I go every morning. I determined in my personal life that before I spoke to anybody, I wanted to speak to God. Before I started doing any work or doing any business, I wanted to spend time with my Creator. And I felt that that has helped me a long way in my Christian walk. And Jesus, was a, he was one, or, or, or he had his custom. Jesus had a custom of going to a particular place to pray because he understood the time alone with God was needful, the time alone to pray and also to listen. For praying is more than just talking to God. It is learning every once in a while to be quiet and listen to God, to pick up your word. Read the Bible and listen to God. He has things that he wants to say. He took the time to give men the ability to print this Bible. Men gave their lives for this word so that you could have it today, that you could stand here and hold this Bible. 
and he meant it for you to read it because that is his word to you. You know, I know it's hard to get alone in our digital age, and, and, but we still have to make time for God. Jesus knew the importance of cultivating his relationship with the Father. So I want to ask you, during this time away from church, I want to encourage you to remove all distractions from your day. This personal time alone with God. Now, when you get alone with God, don't take your telephone. Don't take your tablet. No distractions. Turn them off. Leave them in another room. Don't be tempted to pick it up and check your Facebook account or check your Twitter or your whatever else we're using today to communicate with people. Leave them alone. I want to encourage you as I conclude to use this time to develop your relationship with the Father so that when we get back and, and we're back in church again together and we're singing songs and we're praying and we're listening to the, uh, the pastor speak, we will carry this, what we have learned, on in our lives, and it will make us better Christians. I promise you. So I want to list five things. If you haven't done this already, designate a place of worship. Get a place that you are comfortable being. Make it comfortable. And, and designate a time to be alone with God. For me, it's the morning. That's the best time of the day. I, I plan my day, and, and I sit down and I get a cup of coffee and, and, I, and I just get my Bible and I, I read it and I pray. I pray uh, about the things that are, that are going to happen through the day and praying for my family. Get alone with God and, and make it a special time and make it a habit. One, the place that you are accustomed to going and do it every day and bring your Bible, as I've already said. You need the Word of God there. Read a few scriptures. It's not about a marathon at this time. It's about reading some scriptures and meditating on those scriptures and listening for God, what he wants to say to you. The third thing I want to tell you is fourth thing. Actually, that was the third thing. The fourth thing is to pray. Spend some time in prayer. Jesus, uh, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus must have had such a prayer life that the disciples said, I want to pray like him. And they said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus gave a model prayer. Not so much that you have to recite the Lord's Prayer every day, but it's almost like it's a, a, an outline. And so you say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day. So bring your knees to God. And the last thing I want to tell you, when you're through praying, learn to listen. You don't have to talk all the time. You don't have to pray all the time. We, we listen by reading his word, not letting our minds get distracted while we're reading. And we learn to listen by just being quiet. Like I said earlier, so many people are afraid of silence. They have to feel like they have to have noise all the time. Get comfortable with silence and spend some time alone with God and see what he will do for you. As always, God bless you. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next week. Amen.